blood. 10 pints of life force, coursing through thousands of miles of arteries, veins, and capillaries. Those blood vessels carry blood to every other organ, keeping them functioning and thriving. What is hereditary spherocytosis? Hereditary spherocytosis is a type of hemolytic anemia in which the red blood cells are sphere-shaped instead of the usual donut shape. As a result, the difference in shape makes the cells more fragile, and when the blood cells are passing through the spleen, they are mistaken as damaged and get destroyed. The reduction of red cells in the blood causes anemia the condition in which the number of red blood cells is lower than normal and, as consequence, the blood carries less oxygen to the rest of the body, producing fatigue, concentration and memory problem, loss of appetite, disease of vertigo, reduced energy levels, reduced libido, reduced sleep, and produced headaches. Other characteristics of hereditary spherocytosis are jaundice and splenomegaly. Jaundice is the yellowish pigmentation of the skin and eyes because of the increased levels of bilirubin in the blood. Splenomegaly is enlargement of the spleen caused by the extra work that the spleen has to do in order to clear away the red cells which are not working properly. These are the main symptoms of hereditary spherocytosis. However, there are people whose body is able to replace quickly the loss of red blood cells. So, about 2 or 3 in 10 people with hereditary spherocytosis may not show symptoms. Hereditary spherocytosis is the most common disorder of the red cells membrane. And in the United States, approximately, one in 5,000 people have hereditary spherocytosis. There are three different ways of getting spherocytosis. One way is to be the first that presents the mutation in a family that doesn't have a history of the condition. The other two ways are to inherit the autosomal dominant or recessive. The most common way to inherit hereditary spherocytosis is by autosomal dominant. If one of the parents has a faulty copy of the gene, there is a 50-50 chance that the child will have the gene mutation as well, and he or she will develop hereditary spherocytosis. 7 out of 10 cases of hereditary spherocytosis are inherited this way. In the autosomal recessive way, the person needs to inherit two abnormal genes to develop hereditary spherocytosis. If the person only inherits one gene, he or she becomes a carrier of the disorder. The best way to help with spherocytosis is by getting a splenectomy. A splenectomy is the surgical removal of the spleen. Generally, with most people, the gallbladder is also removed because of the growth of gallstones from the spherocytosis. If the spherocytosis is affecting a child before they have fully developed their immune systems, you would not want to remove their spleen because the spleen functions as a way to build up the immune system, especially in early years. A way to help with this would be blood transfusions until they are old enough for a full splenectomy or to perform half of a splenectomy just to make sure their immune system is still building up but with this, the spleen has the possibility to grow back, and if it did, it would start causing problems again. If the spherocytosis is mild, there are a few ways to help with it that do not include surgery. Iron supplements is one of the biggest ones. This is because when the spleen removes the red blood cells, it is keeping your body from getting the iron it needs and receives from the red blood cells. Another major treatment would be folic acid supplements and B12 supplements to increase production of blood.